Hey guys, in this video, we'll be learning about resultant force. They're going to learn what it is. They're going to learn how to find resultant force when there are two opposing forces acting on an object, when the forces acting on an object are perpendicular, as well as when they are in generally just different directions. So stay tuned. Before I get into the lesson, if you enjoy educational content like this, please hit that subscribe button. And if you are learning something from this video, please don't forget to hit that thumbs up button please smash that like button because it does tell youtube that this is a good video and youtube will continue showing this video to others as well let's get right to the lesson so what is a resultant force the resultant force is just the vector sum of all forces acting on an object force is a vector quantity and so it has magnitude as well as direction how does that work let's look at this example so let's start with opposing forces when the forces acting on an object is directly in the opposite direction of one another. So in this case, we have to assign one direction to be the positive direction. And so the force in the opposite direction will have a negative value because it is a vector. So let's assign the right as positive in this case. So positive will be in the right direction. So the resultant force, which I'm going to denote as F subscript R, is equals to, now let's look at all the forces in the positive direction, which is the right direction here. And that is 5 newtons. So let's write that down first. Positive 5 plus, then we have the other 5 newtons in the opposite direction. So since it is in the opposite direction, we would assign it a negative value, negative 5. And this would give us zero. So the resultant force or the sum of forces acting on this object is zero. This would mean that this object is not accelerating. So remember this, resultant force results in acceleration. Let's look at another example. So let's take this example. So again, I'm choosing to assign right as the positive direction. Which direction is positive is entirely up to you. So let's do both. So first, let me assign positive as right. Now again, when we want to find the resultant force, all we have to do is sum up all the forces. So in the right direction, we have 5 newtons. So let's write positive 5. Now we want to add the forces in the opposite direction, which is 7 newtons. 7 newtons is in the left direction. So we assign it a negative value, negative 7. Now this will give us negative 2 newtons. Now this might seem a bit odd in the beginning. How can a force have a negative value? Remember that forces are vectors. And so the positive and negative in front of the magnitude of the force simply indicates its direction. And since we are already assigned right to be positive, the answer is negative, which means, let's write a statement. Therefore, the resultant force is equal to 2 newtons to the left. This is what this negative means. Negative simply indicates that the resultant force acting on this object is in the left direction. What does this mean? When the resultant force is towards the left, it means that this object is going to accelerate towards the left. Now this works in any direction. As long as the forces are opposite to one another, we can use this method to determine the resultant force. So let's look at this. This is in at an angle, but F3 is in the opposite direction of F1 and F2. So here I'm going to assign the positive direction to F1, the direction of F1. Let's write F1 direction. So we do the same thing again, resultant force is equals to, first we take F1, so positive 2, and then we add it to, you can see F2 is also in the same direction of F1. And so we also assign positive value to F2, which is positive 5. And then we can see F3. Now F3 is in the opposite direction to F1, and therefore we would assign it a negative value so this would be negative 8 now when we sum everything up we will get negative 1 newton now again 
the negative here simply indicates that this force, okay, let's write a statement. Therefore, the resultant force acting on this object is 1 Newton in the direction of F3. Because F3 is the opposite direction of F1. And since F1 has positive value, F3 has a negative value. So the direction in F3 is negative. This is how the resultant force, this is the direction of the resultant force. And the magnitude of it is 1 Newton. Now what happens if the forces are not opposing each other but perpendicular? So here again we have to remember the concept of vector addition. So when we are adding vectors, so let's call this F1 and F2. F1 plus F2 is exactly the same as F2 plus F1. So it doesn't matter which we start with. Now let me start with F1 first and then I will start with F2. So first we draw F1. Remember to follow the exact same direction. So this is 4 newtons. This is the direction of F1. So when we are adding vectors, it is important to remember when we are drawing the vectors, you must add, okay, this is the end of the first vector because the direction of the vector is up. So this is the end of the first vector. Now the beginning of the second vector must start at the end of the first vector. So I'm going to begin F2 from the same point. So here we will draw our three newtons. This is F2. And where is the resultant force? The resultant force is simply from the very beginning to the very end. This is the direction of the resultant force. Now we have to remember that the forces are perpendicular to one another, F1 and F2. So actually what we've got here is a right angle triangle. And the magnitude of the resultant force, this is the resultant force, the magnitude of it can be determined using the Pythagoras theorem. So this is the hypotenuse. To get the value of the hypotenuse, we do square root of the sum of the other two sides. So we get square root of 3 square plus 4 square. So the magnitude is 5 newtons. So this is how we get the resultant force when the forces are perpendicular to one another. Now as I said earlier, it doesn't matter which you draw first because F1 plus F2 is going to be the same as F2 plus F1. Now let's do F2 plus F1 instead. Let's draw F2 first. So I draw my 3 newtons first. So this is the end of the first force. I begin here for my second force and I draw 4 newtons like this. And the resultant force will be from the very beginning to the very end. So we just join it like this. This is the resultant force. Now as you can see, the calculation is going to be exactly the same. Square root of 3 square plus 4 square. We still get 5 newtons. In this case, this is the 90 degrees we still get the same right angle triangle. This works in any direction as long as the two forces are perpendicular to one another. So in this case, these forces are perpendicular to one another and so we can use the same triangle method. Now how about if the forces are in two different directions, just generally different directions. They are not opposite one another and they are not perpendicular to one another. There are two methods to find the answer here. I'm going to be focusing on the triangle of forces method. Now, how to use the triangle of forces method? So, when we are doing a, the triangle of forces method, we are actually doing a drawing to scale. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. So, first, when we are doing drawings to scale, we need to begin by setting the scale. So, I'm going to use 1 cm is to 1 newton. So, this is my scale. Okay, go there. This is my scale. That means for every 1 cm that I draw, it represents 1 newton of force. So let's look at this diagram. Look at the two forces acting on this object. One is 6 newton and one is 7 newton. Now the way that we draw this is very similar to when we did with perpendicular forces. Except that in this case, our triangle will not be a right angle triangle and therefore we cannot simply use the Pythagoras theorem to solve it. 
So how do we add these two? Let's start with 7 newtons. Again, as with the earlier case, it doesn't matter which force you begin with because this is an addition of forces. So let's begin with 7 newtons. So if I want 7 newtons of force, then I should draw a line that is 7 centimeters long because 1 centimeter represents 1 newton. So first, let's get our ruler. Now this is a force that is in the right direction, so I'm going to leave it like this. And I'm going to draw 7 centimeters. So let me start here. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Alright. So this is 7 centimeters. This is 7 newton. And then we have to draw this force, 6 newtons. Now notice the direction. The angle between the two forces is 65 degrees. So you need to use a protractor and then you need to measure the angle. Now I'm using a digital ruler and so I have the angle right away. So I'm going to set it to 65. Just like this. Alright. So once I've set it to 65, what I need to do here is I need to draw a line that is 6 centimeters. So since we are using 1 centimeter to 1 newton scale, if I want to represent 6 newtons, then I need to draw a line that is 6 centimeters long. And so let's do that. So let's start here. Again, the same principle applies as earlier. The start of the new force must be at the end of the old force. So I'm going to begin at the end of 7 newtons and I'm going to draw 6 centimeters. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Right. So this represents 6 newtons of force. And the angle here is 65 degrees. So you need to take note of the direction of the forces. The force of 6 Newton is 65 degrees north of east. So that is exactly what I've drawn here. So how do we determine the resultant force then? So it is the same thing as earlier. We join the very beginning to the very end. This is what we get after we join the very beginning to the very end. So this is the resultant force. Now I've used my digital ruler and this is 30 degrees. So the direction of the resultant force is 30 degrees north of east. So 30 degrees north of the 7 newton force. What about the magnitude of the force? How do we determine the magnitude of the force? Now in this case, you have to measure the length of the force. So let's measure the length of the force. This force, according to my digital ruler, I've measured this to be 10.8 centimeters. Let me just mark that down, 10.8 centimeters. So what does this mean? Since we are using a scale of 1 centimeter to 1 newton, since the force is 10.8 centimeters long, that means the magnitude of the force is 10.8 newtons. So this is called the triangle of forces method. We just draw the triangle and then you have to draw it accurately according to scale and you have to measure the angles accurately as well. Then what you can do is you can just measure the length of the resultant force line that is formed and use your scale to find the magnitude of the force. Once again, the resultant force is simply the vector sum of all the forces acting on an object. I hope you've learned from this video. If you have, please don't forget to hit that like button and do subscribe if you enjoy educational videos like this. I'll be producing at least one video a week and I'll see you in the next video.